Hello everybody, my name is Fernando Matirena and I am pleased to be able to be with you during this Paris Spring Convention uh, organized during the Riling Week. Thanks very much to the organizers for inviting me and I'm going to discuss in this presentation our experience in the use of cement containing calcine clays and limestone and, uh, and to see them as an alternative for sustainable cement production. A little bit about myself. I am a professor at the Central University of Las Villas in Cuba. I live in Cuba and there I am the head of CEDEM, which is a research and development center dedicated to investigation of materials. Further, I work for the company Eco Solutions based in Switzerland, and this is where we interact with the industry. And finally, I am also the chair of the technical committee TC 282 calcine clays as supplementary cementitious materials. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss several issues related to the, the impact of the calcine clays and limestones in cementitious systems on the carbon emissions of the industry. So we'll discuss a little bit about sustainability of the industry, the alternative to increase sustainability of cement production, and then we will introduce the LC3 binder and we will see different choices for the production of this cement depending on the market. We will see how this can impact the carbon emissions. And finally, I will show you some of the industrial uh, projects that are going on right now. What we're seeing uh, very recently is that the cement industry is moving towards lowering carbon emissions. There's a lot of pressure in the press in, in the governments, uh, everywhere you talk about climate change and we're seeing all the problems we have with climate change. And uh, everybody is uh, recognizing that further to the uh, energy sector, the cement sector also has to do something to reduce carbon emissions. We're seeing that almost every company, every association has declared a roadmap for the sustainability and everybody's talking about different targets in terms of time. People are talking about 2030, 2050. The important thing is that the uh, sustainability of the industry is right now on the top of the priorities. And this is a very good moment for the introduction of this new alternative for, for cement. The problem is that we're going to see an increase in cement production in the next few years especially in countries like India, many countries in Africa, South America, and also in Asia. And uh, we will have to cope with this production with uh, uh, measures to reduce carbon emissions at the production. There's also a big pressure in terms of the price of atomic CO2 has been uh, going above the, uh, the boundary of 50 euros a ton. Right now it's, it's hitting the 100 US dollars a ton. And if you realize that the cost of one ton of cement is approximately 50 euros. Today, the cost of the CO2 is around 70 euros. And in a few month time, it could be in the range of 150 euros, meaning this is good business for the industry because they will be able to introduce technologies that they couldn't do before because of the high costs associated with them. Also, when we see the different measures to uh, uh, mitigate the carbon emissions in the industry, we realize that the easiest way, the quickest and by far the cheapest way is to find ways of replacing clinker, which by far is the main uh, CO2 emitter in this uh, system. And this is something that has been dealt with in the last few years. Uh, but the problem is that we're facing a scarcity of some of the main products used by the industry, like slag and fly ash. And uh, the others like natural porcelain and limestone are either limited in their presence or uh, they are low reactivity, meaning they cannot achieve high clinker substitution rates. And what we have said before is reflecting on the uh, average clinker substitution rate that we have seen in the last few years, where we see that there's a plateau. I mean, it has stabilized at a certain day, 
level and there's no significant increase in substitution rate. So, and this is the, uh, the, the very popular graph that many of you have probably seen about the availability of different supplementary cementitious materials. And the important thing here is that we have to compare to the volumes, the annual volumes of cement production that are huge. So cement is the second most used product in the world with production rates in the range of 4 billion tons per year. None of the existing SEMs uh, are available in such amount and a quantity that can really replace significant amounts of Portland cement. The only ones that are available are limestone and calcined clays. And I mean, clays that can be calcined to produce uh, uh, calcined clays. So by far, clays and limestone are the most abundant raw materials that will enable the cement industry to go through the paths of sustainability. And the LC3 is the main subject of a work of a combined group of people from Switzerland, India and Cuba. And here we see that we are able to replace 50% of clinker by a uh, a blend of 30% calcined clay and 15% limestone. And by doing this, we do not compromise the strength, the properties of the material that can match the strength of a SEM1, but also we can increase the clinker reduction rates and also uh, we can improve the durability of the concrete, especially in marine environments or in the presence of reactive uh, aggregates. A little bit about the chemistry of LC3. So here it's it's a very complex, it's, a, it's actually a ternary uh, binder. So we have three reactions taking place at the same time. On one side we have calcine clay, which is, I mean, qualifies as a postulant. So there is a postulanic reaction between clinker and calcine clay. But also we have limestone, which is finely ground. Therefore, it has a, a dilution effect. It's the so-called filler effect, meaning it's diluting the clinker phases, it's uh, enhancing the hydration of the clinker phases, and it's providing also uh, sites for heterogeneous nucleation of the uh, reaction products. But the most important thing is that between the alumina that is present in the calcine clay and the, and the limestone, and the carbonates from the limestone, there is a synergy that enables the formation of an AFN phase, which is called carbonuminate. And this phase is also contributing to a strength, contributing to a denser microstructure, and at the same time is contributing to durability. And this is the magic of the LC3 to put it in, in a way. Clays are very interesting. People are always concerned by the fact that you have to consign them and spend some energy. But you realize here, if you compare clays with different postulants like fly ash, slag, and silica fume, you realize that even the lowest grade clay has a higher reactivity than any of the other postulants that we're dealing with. Meaning, if we're able to get a recently reactive calcine clay, I mean, we are way beyond any of the other materials we have considered so far as uh, supplementary cementitious materials. And further to that, through the synergy with limestone, we are able to produce other products, which, as I said, this is enhancing further the reactivity of the calcine clays, meaning we have the perfect system where we can have a very, very low clinker content and we can, despite the low clinker content, we can still achieve very good properties at all ages. And we also can guarantee a very good durability. And this is also something that we will discuss in this uh, presentation. The typical traditional LC3 consists of 50% of clinker, 30% calcine clay, 15% limestone, and 5% gypsum. This cement can match the properties of a SEM142.5 at all ages. However, you can make different blends, different combinations. You can change the proportions between calcine clay and limestone. 
you can increase the clinker content. So there are many, many choices depending on what you want to do. You can see here how these systems compare with other supplementary cementitious materials. And please bear in mind that we're dealing here with binary systems where you have 70% clinker, and in the ternary systems, you have 50% clinker. One thing I can prove here is that clinker content is not so important as in any other of these uh, pozzolanic cement cases. And this is because of the synergy between the calcine clay and the limestones and the new products that are formed that contribute to the strength, as we're seeing here. Meaning, even at four days, I mean, before seven days, uh, we have very, very good strength results, and these materials can comply with the properties or the demand for a same one uh, 42.5. Uh, and it's the performance is much better than any of the other pozzolans that we had used in the past, like fly ash, like slag, anything. But an interesting choice that has uh, come up in the last few months is the possibility of going further into clinker substitution and dropping clinker content down to 35, 25% and see what happens. Because as I said before, we're addressing a cement that is for concrete, for high strength concrete. But when you look at the uses of cement, more than 40% of the cement is used only in masonry applications. And in this case, a general use cement would do. I mean, you don't need a very high strength cement and that we have to see what happens if we continue to replace more clinker with a combination of calcine clay and limestone. And this is really what happens here. You see here, this is a study that was carried out at EPFL by Franco Sunino, was presented recently at, uh, at the technical committee, Rylem. And you see here that even from the very early ages, we're dealing with cements that have clinker content between 25 and 35 percent. And we're complying at seven days and 28 days, we're complying with uh, requirements, strength requirements of these materials. I mean, we're outperforming these standards with these materials. And this is a very good solution for a back cement that can be sold to the population and, and used for uh, masonry purposes or, I mean, uh, less. Uh, compromise uh, applications, in, in, especially in housing. This is a very good alternative for local low, uh, locals housing for developing countries where, you know, cement and the affordable, affordability of cement could be an issue. In terms of uh, CO2 reduction here, again, as I said, we're calcining the clay but the clay does not emit any CO2 during calcination because it has no limestone. Meaning the CO2 associated with calcination of clay is only the one from the fuel. And we're dramatically reducing the, the clinker content and clinker is the one, I mean, the main contributor to, to CO2 emissions because of the decarbonation of the limestone in, in the clinker. So, there's a lot of possibilities here by using uh, these systems, 50% uh, clinker and 30% consigned clay, 15% limestone, to make a significant contribution to reducing carbon emissions, as uh, I said before. Now we are going to compare the impact of these new cements on carbon emissions, how we can reduce them. In the first case we started during strength, remember we were using 50% clinker, and uh, with this, we were able to match the properties of a SEM142.5, which has uh, carbon emissions in the range of 750 kilograms per ton. We have calculated in our studies that the blend of calcine clay and limestone more or less emits 250 kilograms of CO2 per ton. And when you put this together, you realize that you have 480 kilograms of CO2 per ton of LC3, which compared to same one is 40% uh, CO2 savings, but also significant savings to other uh, uh, types of cement uh, produced. A similar case for this uh, LC335, which we propose for bags, I mean cement for less 
compromised applications where we're having uh, the figure of 395 uh, kilograms of CO2 per ton of LC3. And here we can compare with the benchmark from the Global Cement and Concrete Association, which is around 620. And we see that even in this case, we're able to save 40% of carbon emissions, meaning we're making a significant contribution to uh, reducing carbon emissions. This idea has gone out of the lab and there are several companies already producing the cement at commercial scale. We have the, the example of Cemento Verde in Colombia, where they are producing, uh, using calcine clays in a very successful, producing 1500 tons of calcine clays per day. And also there's another factory in Africa, in Ivory Coast, that was organized by the company Simpor, that uh, also are producing a cement containing combination of calcine clays and limestone. In this case, 720 tons per day of calcine clay, 250,000 tons per year. Both are operating successfully and selling their products. So we're talking about a material that is going now mainstream. With this, I can come to the conclusion of my presentation, meaning that we are, there is an urgency of uh, reducing carbon emissions in the cement industry. Calcine clays and limestone as supplementary cementitious materials are widely abundant and that combined with clinker, they can uh, provide a cement that can match the properties of pure cements with very little clinker content. We are having different formulations and uh, the important thing is that by using this cement, we're able to go below the barrier of 500 kilograms uh, of CO2 per ton. And uh, this is something that right now is going uh, in real life project. Uh, and thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you.